<laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Lee. Okay, Ben, take it away. All right, uh, I did prepare uh, like a speech that I hoped covered all those points. Would you like to do a specific point by point or can I go through that? Which would you prefer? Uh, if it kind of is synced up with the way the questions are written, that's fine. Okay, all right. Uh, I did use it to model what I was gonna say. So I hope I cover everything. Um, okay. Great. First off, thank you for letting me come and talk with you this evening. I really appreciate the opportunity to let you all know who I am and why I'm running. And I'll just jump into it in the interest of time. So my name is Ben Watts and I'm running for the Oregon State or the Oregon State uh, House of Representatives in District 15. I'll talk more about District 15 in just a moment, but I am a father, a husband, and a veteran, and I am from Albany. I was born and raised here, and I grew up here, and I am a product of the Albany public school system. I attended Lynn Benton Community College after I graduated, and I earned associate's degree there, uh, after which I joined the United States Army where I spent uh, five years and I did spend one of those deployed to Iraq, but I also got to meet my wife while I was in the army. Her name is Pamela and she's a school teacher at South Albany High School. And we moved back here in 2006 when I left the military uh, to raise our family and make our life here. I have two wonderful children, William and Penelope. Uh, Penelope and William both go to public schools here. And uh, <clears throat> I, Sorry, <laughs> uh, a little bit about District 15 I wanna tell you about. I know that District 15 is pretty south of Marion County. And I know that it's kind of new for Marion County voters to be looking at a candidate down here, uh, but that's because of the redistricting. So yeah. it usually covers uh, Millersburg, Tangent and Albany, and it still does, uh, but now it's extended up uh, to the very Southern part of Salem. And so if you haven't seen that map, uh, that's the area that we're looking at. And down here in District 15, I am the only Democrat running and I'm running against an incumbent Republican uh, who has voted against the Student Success Act, which allows our students to engage in after school activities that may be helpful for them, also helps address the learning loss that we've seen during COVID. She also voted to prevent agricultural workers from receiving overtime pay when they worked over 40 hours a week. And those are just a couple of the things I wanted to highlight, but I also wanna tell you what I'm for. Uh, and I'll start with a story. When I was in Kalapuya Middle School, and I say that because that's where my son is going now. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a friend and his name was Tyler. And I remember it was an art class and I remember it was on Monday because I remember this moment so clearly. Uh, it was almost lunchtime and I mentioned to him that I was hungry and I was looking forward to lunch. I think that's very common sentiment for middle schoolers. And he replied to me that he is really hungry too because he hadn't eaten since Friday at lunchtime. Oh my God. And that, that stuck with me. Here I am 30 years later talking to you about it. Wow. And I know that there are children like Tyler today in our schools. One in seven children in Oregon suffer from food insecurity. And so that means that Every week, they can't count on having three meals a day every day. But what they can count on is having to study math or reading or music while, while the pain of hunger demands their attention. I don't think that's conducive to learning, and I, I don't like that we have hungry kids in our state. We have to do better, and we must end childhood hunger in Oregon. And we also have to make, or <clears throat> excuse me, take measures that help the environment while they grow up in our state. We want to ensure that we have access to renewable energy. I know that there's been great strides in that direction uh, lately, but we, there's more work to do. And we also want to ensure that when we're using energy in our homes or on the roads, as we move towards uh, electric vehicles, that what we're using is energy produced from renewables and not from burning coal. I also want to make sure that as they get jobs and everyone else who's working at or near minimum wage, that we can increase the minimum wage to help them take home more of the value that they, they earn for our community. And I think we can also soften that blow to some of our uh, small businesses as well as we uh, provide some aid to them during a transition period. And as people are looking to buy their first homes, right now homes are very expensive and so is rent. 
And so I would like to increase the number of houses at all economic levels in the state. And I wanna work with our builders to do that. So that means that people that are renting can see their, their rent prices not skyrocket, maybe even come down, that we can aid them if they are near homelessness. And also, as there are people who are looking to buy their first home, that maybe that dream of owning a home can become more achievable for them. And finally, uh, I am a veteran, and this one's very close to my heart. I want to house the homeless veterans in Oregon. And that means more than just providing facilities. It means providing the services that they need. They need mental health care, physical health care, job retraining. I think that we need to provide these things for them, and I think they earned it. And I will stop there, uh, and I'd like to ask if you have any questions for me. Uh, I have one. I was just looking at the at our prepared questions. Oh, yes. uh, what, what, what were your skills and lived experience which make you the best candidate for this position? The, the veteran thing, I got that. Uh, what, other, what other life skills do you have that would... Okay, yeah, thank you for that. Uh, I am a stay-at-home dad right now, but before that, it, this happened in time with, uh, with uh, COVID, and so that's one of the ways that we handled that. But before that, I was a manager at Samaritan Health Services, and I worked with people frequently. We made budgets, we made plans for the future, and we improved the care that the hospitals could provide to patients. And everything that we did was with that in mind that we'd be doing that. And even though I was in IT, often what I had to do uh, for employees that I worked with was kind of draw a line <clears throat> between what we're doing on computers to how that helps a patient and and a nurse yeah, giving care. And I, I enjoy doing that. And I hope to bring those skills to the state house. Cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, one of our other questions here was, uh, why do you feel you're the strongest Democratic candidate? Well, you're the strongest because you're the only one standing. So congratulations. Yeah. That. I'm sorry, who is, who, is the, who is the current, who is the incumbent in that race? I'm sorry. Her name is Shelly Bosshart Davis. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Well, some of us aren't all that all that familiar with that district because it's it, the the lines being redrawn is just tilted everything you know 180 degrees for all of us. So it's been a lot of adjustments all the way along. Uh, so uh, if that's uh, why don't we open it up to audience questions then? Be sure to unmute to ask your questions. Laurel's got her hand up, searching feverishly for that unmute. <laughs> Yes, I, I have a question. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm in your district. And I, I know from, I live in very rural South Salem, almost uh, right on the edge of what's considered Jefferson near, near yeah. Talbot. And, you like and, yeah. and I know how Republican, we have dominant Republican neighbors with big Trump signs still and flags everywhere. And, you know, it's pretty disgusting in terms of the gun lovers and that sort of thing. And, and I just wondered, um, I, I'm sure you know that it's going to be a tough, tough win. Um, and will now the person that you're running again, that, that will probably get, you know, rerun again is the one that took over for Nearman, isn't it? I believe or so. Or is it a different person? Yeah, it, back in 2018, yeah. Okay. Oh, can, can you capitalize on the fact that, that Nierman got booted out <laughs> at all? Or, or would, don't you think that would help? Uh, I am not sure. Um, I probably could create a, a message around that. But uh, yeah, I am not sure that, that what she represents in the Republican Party really aligns exactly with what he does. And I think that she would probably be able to respond in that way. Yeah. So I don't know if I could. Well, I thought she was some sort of um, worked in in his in his committee or something. I thought I could they, be wrong. They they are part of the Republican caucus, and so they do align in some things. But I think within mm -hmm. that, there's a lot of differences that that she would be able to uh, show. How, however, when it when it comes to voting, they do vote the same, and so. I think mm -hmm. there's, there's something there, yeah. Yeah, the, the only other thing I wanted to say is that people that live around me the, and the Republicans, they, they do respect veterans. And I think that you could capitalize on that, that may sway some people 
that otherwise would vote Republican. I don't know. I think there's some value in that. I think that I bring a perspective that's uh, perhaps not super common in the state house with that. And also, uh, I think that we do need to do better for our veterans and I'll bring that message as well. Are they gonna, if, do you know, are they gonna have any uh, televised debates or anything? Or do you know? I don't prior? believe so. That's not been something that's happened in the past. Okay. Yeah, Lee. Yeah, uh, several of us on this call, uh, including Mary Ann over in Salem, who has the Healthcare for All Oregon sign behind her, uh, are supportive of the idea of getting to a universal health care in the United States as well as in Oregon. And we have a joint task force on universal health care that the legislative created and is wrapping up its work uh, to begin to listen. Uh, they're going to finish a plan for an actual single payer universal health care system in Oregon in the next couple of months and go out to communities and business groups and get input on the plan uh, before bringing it back to the 23 legislature. With your background in healthcare in Samaritan and so forth, uh, what do you feel about uh, helping move us toward universal health care in Oregon? I'm glad you asked this. Uh, I'm very supportive of universal health care, both in the nation and in the state. And I think that uh, the uh, Affordable Care Act did a lot of good. And I think a lot of people didn't recognize some of the good that it did. But I think that we need to move forward uh, beyond what it was able to provide. And I like the idea of single health care, and I'd be supportive of it. Or single payer, excuse me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very cool. We're getting close on time. So if you would, Marianne, did you have a question? Marianne, okay, you're, uh, and we're getting close on time. So I was wondering if you wanted to wrap up with uh, your closing comments, if any. Yes, thank you. So again, on District 15, I know it's new uh, for a lot of folks to be looking at what's going on down here, but uh, the Republicans do, as, as Laura was bringing up earlier, they do have a 6% lead in this district. That is maybe a, a difficult challenge, but it's not an insurmountable one. I think that if we come together, we can win. And so if if you believe that we need to end child hunger in Oregon or that we should house our homeless veterans, then I need your support. And I'll, I have a website where you can look more at my policies or donate or sign up to volunteer at www.benwattsfororegon.com. Ben, could you do me a favor and enter that into the chat? Absolutely. Before you jump off, it's a great way to get it out to everybody and that way that they can copy it and paste it for later. Thank you so much. Uh, any other, uh, Lee or Joyce, any other comments or questions? Uh, no, is our next candidate here? Yes, he is. So Ben, I'm gonna thank you very much for joining us and good luck with your campaign. If there's anything we can do to help, let us know. All right, thank you so much for letting me come and talk uh, to you.